I don't think we'll ever forget the day Molly was born. I was um, 34 weeks pregnant and I was sick as a dog for two weeks. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. I went to the doctor's office, told him, my husband, to go ahead, go to work. I'd be fine. My mother took me to the doctor. They looked at me and said, you need to go to the hospital. And I said, okay. And they, I thought I was just getting rehydrated, told him not to worry. It took him three hours to get any blood out of me. And on they come in, they said, you have to have this baby right now. She was born at 5.30 on that Monday. She was four pounds, 13 ounces. Um, she only spent five days in the hospital. She came home. But then she really started developing right on that preemie timeline, about a month or and a half behind milestones. But she was babbling. She was you know, rolling over. She was sitting up. Um, she would get sick a lot because we were both working, so she was in daycare. We didn't really notice you know, too much that was uh, you know, abnormal about Molly you know, anything medically wrong, you know, other than, uh, you know, a series of ear infections and, you know, general illnesses that you're going to get the first time that your child is in daycare. I was at school in homeroom at the end of the day, and it was 2.27 p.m., I'll never forget, and my cell phone's ringing, and I don't usually answer it in school, but it was the daycare, and it was the second time they'd called, and, they, and all I heard was, you need to get here now, your daughter's having a seizure. I think actually my sister-in-law finally get in, got in touch with me at work. Um, just the, you know, Molly had a seizure, she's at the hospital, you know, get back as soon as you can. I was, you know, working in New York City, so other than the, the day my daughter was born, you know, six weeks early, you know, that was the, uh, you know, definitely the longest train ride of, uh, of my life. By the time we got to the emergency room, she had spiked a fever. And um, so they said, oh, it's a febrile seizure. And I had had a couple when I was younger, when I was a baby, and so I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I, they wanted to d just discharge us and send us home, and I was sitting with her and I said, you know, I'm just not comfortable leaving yet. They all walked out of the room. Five seconds later, my sister was throwing the door open, get back in here, because she was seizing again. It was 45 minutes seizure, and that's when we knew life was never gonna be the same. So they came in and they said, we think she has Gervais syndrome after just having these seizures once. And we were like, well, what's that? And we just had no idea. Um, but shortly thereafter, they got us in for more tests and we saw the geneticist and then we did find out that her test was negative um, for Gervais syndrome, but it's Gervais-like. That's what they, they keep telling us. We've had more than one doctor say to us. And it makes you wonder how many of other kids fall into that category. It's my little girl. It's, it took a while to, uh, to accept that things were wrong, but it's a, it's a double-edged sword now because we don't have the diagnosis, so in the end, sometimes it's better to not know exactly what it is. Her development was behind. After her first set of seizures, she lost all of her words. She had had 12, 12 words at a year, and they all went away. They all went away. She was so close to walking. She had learned to stand, and it took us another six months before she would take her first steps. You know, when we heard about Dravet syndrome, we you know, did some, some research online, because there really, you know, at that point, there wasn't much information out there. The unknown has been the scariest, and it took me, it took me until she was probably about three and going through all the birth to three, all the therapy, and really getting to know her and getting to accept who she was and what an amazing child she was. Every day became a miracle. Every day became a new adventure. And I found I was able to delve further and, and be committed to the foundation. When we started the foundation, the big thing was, yes, we're gonna work on finding a cure for Gervais, but we're not going to forget about those kids like Molly, who fall into the cracks. We're meeting families that, you know, have kids that are like Molly, and you realize that you're part of a bigger picture. She's still Molly. She's still Molly no matter what I do or what happens to her, and we'll always have her. She'll always be our Molly, whether she's with us, where, wherever she is, you know, we, we won't lose that.